My interest in seaweed stems from quite some time ago when I started studying science and I thought you know it's a, it's a very um, environmentally sustainable product um, and there's seaweed farming all over the world and why shouldn't there be seaweed farming here in New Zealand or at least seaweed utilisation here in New Zealand. What we have here is a Undaria pinnatifida plant. This part of the plant up here is called the sporophyll. Looks like a little collar right down at the end. Now this is the part that has high amounts of fucoidin. And fucoidin is the uh, bioactive compound that we're looking at in terms of its antioxidant uh, and anti-cancer properties. This here um, that you find in various Asian restaurants. Um, this is actually the midrib that's been cut up and shredded. And because it's been blanched in hot water, the brown pigments are all lost and it turns this lovely bright green colour. I approached Wakatu Incorporated, the fourth largest mussel producer in New Zealand. And we set up a, a range of uh, projects uh, to answer the questions that Wakatu was interested around the utilisation of, of Undaria in a commercial space. We studied anti-cancer activity and the recent results showed that uh, uh, the composition of um, fucoidin um, is a little bit changed in New Zealand you know, seaweed. So it's a potential we can, you know, have uh, better anti-cancer activity from our product. What's really exciting is that fucoidin um, particularly uh, is a, a very popular nutraceutical around the planet already. You can buy, uh, you can buy fucoidin off the shelf. Um, and what we do have here in New Zealand is we have the reputation of clean green waters and, and certainly where this stuff is growing it is very clean. This is, means that we can potentially um, you know, walk into their market with our Undaria. This is um, uh, the strength of AUT and we do have a lot of uh, you know, marine experts. Of course New Zealand has got quite unique environment and we have a lot of unique species. So we want to study them well and then see whether there is any new compound can be you know, uh, extracted from that. Following on with the successes with Wakatu around the Undaria, we were approached by Cloudy Bay clams. Hey John. Hey, how are you? Good, good. Got some clams today. Great. Let's take a look. Got some of the big storm clams. Gee, they're big. Yep, yep. So those would be pretty nice for you. They're very interested in extending the shelf life um, of their clams while maintaining uh, taste and flavour. And so that's where we involved our food scientists, um, where we've got a student who's looking at a range of blanching temperatures. So they blanch these clams once they're vacuum packed, uh, just for a short time. They're not totally cooked, um, but it extends the shelf life up to you know, 30 to 40 days. We're doing some sensory trials, so we're um, blanching them and keeping them for a number of days or weeks, and then having people come into the sensory lab um, and, and taste them. One of the other things we have at AUT is we have food science and we have our biologists, marine biologists, but we also have a, a school of hospitality where they teach um, uh, culinary arts. And so we've also involved them in the process and they're developing recipes for the clams and they'll be on our menu at Pico and Four Seasons Restaurant. How are they harvested? Um, they've got a um, special hydraulic dredge that um, sort of takes them, liquefies the sand in front of the dredge, and that way they're not damaged at all and they don't have lots of sand packed inside of them. Okay. Better give it a try. I think I'll just use my fingers. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm.